For a closer look at Boko Haram and the terror crisis in Nigeria, we're joined by joining us in Nigeria. So why is the international community just now paying attention to it? Well, I think, um, as was said in the uh, report, the Nigerian government has only now accepted international assistance. There was clearly a feeling within the Nigerian military as well as the administration that they could handle this themselves. So they have been uh, fighting back against the attacks. They have declared a state of emergency in three states. They mobilized an 8,000-man task force. It's think that with the opening and, of course, with this egregious and brazen abduction, um, the government has basically now realized that it needs the help, and it's suddenly on the radar of people around the world as well as the governments. Well, you know, the United States didn't even recognize it until uh, more than five months ago. Then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton refrained from labeling it a terrorist group. So um, why do you think other countries have not stepped up and done that, knowing that all of this has been going on? Well, the designation of them as a terrorist organization um, had more impact with U.S. military assistance and security assistance. And, and so it wouldn't have impacted what the surrounding states would have done anyway. They would have been interested in securing their borders. And given what happened in Mali, where an, an Islamic armed group took over the country and only was forced out of power by an international force, um, one would assume that all of those countries are very sensitive and have been watching the Boko Haram situation for very closely. But the coordination, the sharing of information, um, the strategies, um, you know, has the Nigerian government been coordinating even within itself? There, there really are questions about their competence, about their strategy, and they're willing to coordinate with other players. And now that they're faced with this crisis, uh, I think that's now changing. What about the other countries, the neighboring countries that um, may be taking these girls in? You know, a couple hundred girls, pretty hard to hide, one would think. But if they're crossing the borders, why isn't there a cooperation from those other governments to bring them back to Nigeria? It's, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a question of capacity. Um, I think it's, we have to be honest about the ability of these governments in a Chad or in a Niger or in a Cameroon to actually police their borders. These are, these are lines on paper more than they are actually borders that are enforced and protected. So there's free movement. Um, there would potentially not be a large group of the girls. I think the, the Boko Haram members would have broken them up into smaller groups, um, and they might, may have escaped attention. They may still be in the forest. So the, the intelligence and reconnaissance capacity will probably make a big help in trying to identify what happened to the group. But it's not as easy um, to expect that these neighboring governments actually had the ability to monitor the borders and to see what happened, especially if it was by uh, an outlaw organization that would have made it difficult. Do you think this group can carry out something of this magnitude again? Absolutely. The, the fact that we had an attack on Monday um, indicates that they, they do have that capacity. Um, the fact that um, there is no intelligence coming from the community, I think, also underscores the fact that the Nigerian military has not done its job in basically winning the confidence of the locals um, and getting the kinds of information that it needs. So I, I think the, the, the threat is real um, and that um, they're, they're definitely going to need help. All right, Mr. Akwe from Amnesty International, we appreciate your perspective. Thanks for joining us here on the show. Thank you.